Goddess of our Divine Mother. Our Divine Mother says our courage and endurance must be as great as our hope and our hope has no limits. With my blessing says our Divine Mother. of our Lord Sri Aurobindo from the collective works of our Lord Sri Aurobindo SABCO volume 17 book The Hour of God chapter 2 evolution psychology the super mind first subtopic man a transitional being our Lord Sri Aurobindo says man is a transitional being he is not final for in man and high beyond him ascend the radiant degrees that to a divine superman home there lies our destiny and the liberating key to our aspiring but troubled and limited mundane existence we mean by mankind imprisoned in a living body but Mind is not the highest possible power of consciousness, for mind is not in possession of truth, but only its ignorant seeker. Beyond mind is a supramental or Gnostic power of consciousness that is in eternal possession of truth. This supermind is at its source the dynamic consciousness in its nature at once and inseparably infinite wisdom and infinite will of the divine knower and creator. Supermind is superman. A Gnostic supermanhood is the next distinct and triumphant evolutionary step to be reached by earthly nature. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, The step from man to superman is the next approaching achievement in Earth's evolution. It is inevitable. It is at once the intention of the inner spirit and the logic of nature's process. The appearance of a human possibility in a material and animal world was the first glint of some coming divine light, the first far-off promise of a Godhead to be born out of matter. The appearance of the Superman in the human world will be the fulfillment of this divine promise. Out of the material consciousness in which our mind works as a chained slave is emerging the disk of a secret sun of power, joy and knowledge. Book first, Savitri. How art thou named among the sons of men? I have heard Strange voices cause the ether's way. The center's withered song has filled my ear. I glimpsed the absurd bathing in the pool and saw the wood nymphs peering through the leaves. The winds have shown to me their trampling law. I have beheld the princes of the sun burning in thousand pillared houses of light. So now my mind could dream and my heart fear. Thou drovest thy horses 
Allah Aurobindo says the super mind will be the form body of that radiant effulgence super manhood is not man climbed to his own natural zenith not the superior degree of human greatness knowledge power intelligence will character genius dynamic force saintliness love purity of perfection super mind is something beyond mental man and his limits it is a greater consciousness than the highest consciousness proper to human nature a lord shirobindo continues to say man is a mental being whose mentality works here involved obscure and degraded in a physical brain even in the highest of its kind it is balked of its luminous possibilities of supreme force and freedom by this dependence shut off even from its own divine powers important to change our life beyond certain narrow and precarious limits it is an imprisoned and checked force most often nothing but a survivor or caterer of interests or a purveyor of amusement to the life and the body but divine superman will be a gnostic spirit supermind in him will lay hands on the mental and physical instruments and standing above and yet penetrating our lower already manifested paths it will transform mind life and body a lord shirobindo continues to say mind is the highest force in man but mind in man is an ignorant clouded and struggling power and even when most luminous it is possessed only of a thin and reflected and pallid light a super mind free master expressive of the divine glories will be the superman's central instrument its untrammeled movement of self-existent knowledge spontaneous power and untainted delight will impress the harmony of the life of gods on the earthly existence our lord shirobindo says man in himself is little more than an ambiguous nothing he is a littleness that reaches to a wideness and grandeur that are beyond him a dwarf enarmed of the heights his mind is a dark ray in the splendors of the universal mind his life is a striving exulting suffering and eager passion tossed and sorrow stricken or a blindly and dumbly longing petty moment of the universal life his body is a laboring perishable speck in the material universe this cannot be the end of the mysterious upward surge of nature there is something beyond something that mankind shall be it is seen now only in broken glimpses through rifts in the great wall of limitations that deny its possibility and existence a lord says an immortal soul is somewhere within him and gains out some sparks of its presence above an eternal spirit overshadows him and upholds the soul continuity of his nature but this greater spirit is obstructed from descent by the hard lid of his constructed personality and that inner luminous soul is wrapped stifled oppressed in dense outer coatings in all but a few the soul is seldom active in most hardly perceptible 
our lord continues to say the soul and spirit in man seems rather to exist above and behind this nature than to be a part of his external and visible reality they are in course of birth rather than born in matter they are for human consciousness possibilities rather than things realized and present Our Lord says man's greatness is not in what he is but in what he makes possible his glory is that he is in the closed place and secret workshop of a living labor in which supermanhood is being made ready by a divine craftsman but he is admitted to to a yet greater greatness and it is this that allowed to be unlike the lower creation he is partly an artisan of this divine change his conscious ascent his consecrated will and participation are needed that into his body may descend the glory that will replace him his aspiration is earth's call to the supramental creator Happy Bahar? 